Hey there, tech fans. Rick here again from the O-Ray team. In today's video, I'd like to help you better understand the differences between an HDMI splitter and an HDMI extender. And I know it can get a little bit confusing because both of these products are used with your media equipment, but the way they operate and when you'd use them are completely different. Now, fundamentally, an HDMI splitter is used to send the output from a single media device to multiple displays at the same time. And that's a local connection. It's limited by the HDMI cable length, which is typically less than 10 meters. The HDMI extender, on the other hand, allows you to take content from a media device and send it to a remote location, in some cases, 100 meters or more away. So the use case for both of these products is dramatically different. This will split that single media stream into two output streams typically, and this one will extend that single media stream great distances away. Now as part of this overview, I'd like to spend a few minutes and show you the connection diagrams of what you'd use an HDMI splitter for, and the same for the HDMI extender, and then I'll come back and actually do a short demonstration showing you how this one works and how this one works, and then finally I'll come back and point out a few things you need to keep in mind if you're in the market for an HDMI splitter or an HDMI extender. So stay tuned, and next I'll show you the connection diagrams, then I'll come back, do the demonstrations, and give you some things to keep in mind. An HDMI splitter is a device that allows you to connect multiple display devices to the same media source. A typical setup would include a media device, like a game console or a computer, and two monitors. The key thing to keep in mind is that this is a local connection and is limited to standard HDMI distances, typically less than 10 meters, for proper HDMI operation. To use an HDMI splitter, you would basically disconnect your media device from your monitor and instead connect it to the HDMI input port of the splitter. You would then use two additional HDMI cables to connect each of the monitors to the output ports of the splitter. This would allow you to enjoy the content from that media device on both of these monitors at the same time. Some of the more sophisticated models of HDMI splitters, like the O-Ray UHDS-102A, can accommodate monitors with different display resolutions and will automatically scale the media to accommodate each of the connected monitors. An HDMI extender kit is something you can use to share media content with a remote location that is well beyond the limits of a standard HDMI connection. For example, if you'd like to share content with a monitor in an upstairs bedroom, you'd assume that you can simply use a longer HDMI cable. The challenge is that the HDMI standard isn't designed for long distance transmission and is typically limited to 10 meters or less for most installations. In this case, you can use an HDMI extender to make your connection and enjoy the content at that remote location. To do this, you'll connect the HDMI transmitter to your media device with an HDMI cable at the primary location. Then you'll connect the HDMI receiver to your monitor in the upstairs bedroom with another HDMI cable. Finally, you'll simply connect the transmitter and receiver together using a longer LAN cable to complete the installation. Remember to check the specifications of the HDMI extender kit you're using to see what class of LAN cable you need. The most common kits require a CAT5e, CAT6, or CAT7 cable. This is a great way to share content with remote locations and a solution like the EX-400C can easily extend your connection for more than 100 meters over a single LAN cable. This type of device is used for remote connections, unlike the HDMI splitter, which is limited to local ones. In this first demonstration, I'll show you how an HDMI splitter makes it incredibly easy for you to share the HDMI output from any media device with two local monitors. And for this demonstration, over here I've set up a small media player that's currently displaying an image on this monitor, and this is my primary setup, and that's the media content I'd like to distribute to both of these monitors simultaneously. In front of me, I have the HDMI splitter. Now the first connection I'll make is my media device to the HDMI splitter, and to do that, I'll disconnect it from the monitor, standard HDMI connection, to the HDMI input port on the splitter. And now I can reconnect my primary monitor, and to do that, I'll need a second HDMI cable, and I'll plug one end of that cable into the monitor and the other end of it into the HDMI output port number one. And now I can connect up my second monitor. I've already got an HDMI cable connected to that, and that plugs into HDMI output port number two. Now the only thing I'm missing at this point is power, and the minute I have power to this unit, it's going to start an internal power on self-test where it's checking all the electronics, it's checking the resolution of my input source and the resolution of both of my monitors to make whatever adjustments are needed to give me the best possible picture on both. So let's add power. 
Now it's going to take a second or two once I add power to do that assessment and then immediately you'll see screen start popping up with that image. So once it goes through and checks the resolution of the monitors and the media stream, it's making the adjustments needed to give me a good picture on both of these monitors. And right now I've got it on both of these monitors. Now, one of the key features that this particular HDMI splitter is incorporating is that auto scaling capability where if I had two different monitors, one larger and one smaller, this would make adjustments to give me a beautiful picture on both of those monitors, even if they had different screen sizes. Now, the key thing to remember here is the HDMI splitter will only extend that second monitor HDMI distances, and typically that's less than 10 meters. So if you need to extend that second monitor further than that, you're gonna to have to use an HDMI extender kit, which I'll explain in the next demonstration. Now I'll show you just how easy it'll be to use an HDMI extender kit to share all of your HDMI media content with a remote location. And for this demonstration, over here I've set up a small media player that's currently displaying an image of a media player on this monitor. And this represents the primary location where I'm currently enjoying the content I'd like to share with a remote location. I've also set up a second monitor over here that represents the remote location where I'd like to enjoy that content. And depending on the style of kit you're using and the resolution of your media content, this could be 50, 100, even hundreds of meters apart. I have the transmitter module here and the receiver module here. Now the first set of connections I'll make are to the transmitter module, and I'll start by disconnecting my media source from the monitor, it's a standard HDMI connection, and I'll plug that into the HDMI input port on the transmitter. And now I can add power, I've already plugged the power supply in, the other end has a barrel connection on it, which plugs into the DC input port. And the minute I add power to the transmitter, it immediately starts an internal power on self-test where it's checking all the electronics to make sure everything's working okay. It's also checking the resolution of the media source to make whatever adjustments are needed to send the best possible picture downstream to the remote location. And now we can connect up the remote receiver. I've already connected an HDMI cable up to the monitor. This plugs into the HDMI output port on the receiver. And then I can add power, again a DC power port here and I plug the barrel connection into that. Now this starts an internal power on self-test where it's checking all the electronics and checking the resolution of the monitor so when it handshakes with the transmitter across the LAN connection, it can let it know what resolution the monitor can accommodate. Now the only connection we're missing in this case is the LAN connection between the transmitter and receiver and I'm gonna use a CAT6 cable but typically it's a CAT5E, CAT6, or CAT7 cable connecting between these two and I've got a nice short cable right here. I'll plug that into the LAN port on the transmitter and the other LAN port on the receiver. Now, the minute I make this connection, a communication starts between the transmitter and receiver modules where it's letting it know what resolution it can display. It's making adjustments. You can see it just blinked out, making the adjustments needed to give you the best possible picture over here. And it may take a couple of tries to get it perfectly right, but once it settles in, you can see that my content from over here is now being distributed to my remote location over a single LAN cable. Now, one other nice feature you can find on a lot of the HDMI extender kits is a feature called Local Loopback, which actually allows you to enjoy the content at the primary site while you're simultaneously transmitting it to the remote location. This product has that available, and to make use of that, you'll need another HDMI cable, and you'll connect one end up to your local monitor at the primary location, and the other end of that cable to the HDMI output port on the transmitter. Now, the minute I make this connection, it's gonna readjust. You'll see it blink out because what's happening now is it realizes there's a second monitor and it's making the adjustments needed to accommodate both of these monitors. And it's pretty nice that I can still enjoy the content here at my primary site while I'm sending it to the remote site. One other key feature is the infrared loopback feature or infrared blaster kit in the case of O-Ray that'll actually pick up infrared remote control signals from that remote location and send those back over the same LAN cable to the primary location and rebroadcast these so you can control the content you're watching. And it really is just that simple to get an HDMI extender kit working. I hope those demonstrations were helpful. Now here are a few key things to keep in mind if you're searching for an HDMI splitter or an HDMI extender. And I'll start with the HDMI splitter. Your first and probably most important consideration is the resolution of the media content that you'll be using with the splitter. Now most modern HDMI splitters can easily handle 1080p content, but if your media device can provide 4K or 8K content, you'll want to ensure whatever splitter you're considering can handle those higher resolutions, because if it can't, the splitter will actually reduce the resolution of the media content that it passes along to those monitors, which means you're not enjoying a high resolution image. The next thing to look for is a concept called auto scaling. And what auto scaling does is inside the splitter, it'll analyze the media stream that's coming in on the input port and also analyze both of the displays connected to the output port and it'll make whatever adjustments are needed to give you the best possible picture on both of the monitors. If the splitter can't auto scale, it will typically default 
to whatever screen size is on the least competent monitor. So you may end up with one monitor with a full screen and another monitor with a crop picture on it. So always look for auto scaling. Another nice thing to find in a splitter is audio extraction capabilities, which means the splitter will actually strip the audio content from the media stream that it's supplying to both of the monitors and allow you to pass that audio along to a sound bar or home stereo system for better quality audio. And one other key thing that's nice is the number of inputs versus the number of outputs. Now, a typical splitter will have a single input and dual outputs, but there are splitters in the market, and O-Ray makes quite a few models, that have multiple outputs beyond two, and they also have multiple inputs, which means I now have a choice to connect two devices up to the front of the splitter and select which of those inputs is sent to both of my monitors. So that may be something you want to consider as well. All of those things are important features that you should look for in any HDMI splitter you're considering. And now I'll talk about the HDMI extenders. An HDMI extender is a wonderful product to send content from one location to a remote location, and your main consideration should be two things. It should be the resolution of the content you want to share, and also the distance away that second location is from the primary location, because both of those factors will determine a lot about which of the HDMI extenders you choose. And HDMI extenders are available in a couple of different versions. The most basic version is a LAN connection between the primary and secondary site. There are also versions like this product right here that are wireless connections, where you connect this up to your HDMI media device, the receiver is in your remote location, and there's no connection other than the wireless connection between them. The third and most sophisticated uses a fiber cable, so you've actually got a fiber optic cable between the primary and secondary site. And depending on the resolution and the distance, one of those three choices will work really well for you. Now, typically, shorter connections at lower resolution work really well with a wireless solution, and a wireless solution is great if you're in a conference room and you have multiple people that have to present on a single monitor and you're within, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 meters away from that display, you're in pretty good shape using a wireless solution. Some of these can go a lot further, but again, the resolution typically is lower than the other two solutions. Now with a LAN connection, you can go hundreds of meters and you can transmit both 1080p and 4K content for very long distances over LAN. It's also probably the most cost-effective solution because the connection cables are inexpensive, the transmitter and receiver are reasonably priced, so that solution is probably the most popular solution people use for HDMI extenders. If you need to transmit 4K content or even higher, you're going to have to use an optical cable between those two locations. That works really well for very long distances and very high resolutions. It tends to be a little bit more expensive than the other two solutions because of the cabling costs and the distances and transmitter and receiver required, but those three options will definitely suit your needs. Now, some of the key features you're looking for in an HDMI extender start with things like power over cable which you can use in a LAN situation. You can't really use it on the optical or the wireless, but in a LAN situation, power over cable technology can really greatly simplify your wiring because it allows you to plug in the transmitter unit and the power required for all of the remote locations, if there are multiple ones, are sent over the same LAN cable to those remote locations. So you don't have to worry about power supplies at the remote locations. Another key feature you should look for in any HDMI extender you're considering is something called infrared blasters or infrared loopback. Now, O-Ray provides that with pretty much all of their solutions. And what an infrared blaster kit will do is it will collect up the remote control signals at that remote location and send those back over the connection to the primary location to be rebroadcast there. And that means you can control the content you're watching from that remote location, which is incredibly useful. The third option, which I look for a lot in these, is an audio extraction capability, which again allows me to strip the audio at that remote location and pass it along to a sound bar or some other type of audio amplifier for better quality content. And all those things together really help you determine which HDMI extender might be perfect for your situation, and there is no one answer for everybody because it really depends, again, on your resolution, the distance, the type of connection you want between the two, and really the feature set you're looking for. So hopefully you found this helpful. The nice thing about the O-Ray kits is they include pretty much everything you need to open the box and get started really quickly with a few simple connections. So until next time, thanks again for watching.